Welcome back. Well, yes, indeed, uh, the country is not short of recommendations in terms of what do we do, how do we get it right. We're about to get more of it. Mark, where? Well, you do know, Chamberlain, we have been on this topic for quite a while, and uh, we're getting another perspective on it this morning. Joining us now to discuss this is Senator Inaya Abaribe, who is the Chairman, Senate Committee on Mining, Power and Metallurgy. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily. Thank you, Malpe. I'm sure you must have been very busy during the recess. Abia State was in the news. What was going on in your constituency? Uh, well, I guess everyone in Nigeria knows what happened. Um, my constituency was invaded by soldiers. Uh, a lot of altercations between the people um, who were agitating for a different um, Nigeria and uh, the soldiers who decided that they would take uh, no prisoners, let's say, let's put it that way. So we were all very busy. You we... considered it an, an invasion? Some people would say, is it a separate territory? Well, let's put it this way. When a military force comes in, without any invitation by anybody on ground. I'm talking about the governors and the, the civil populace. And uh, all of a sudden, there's uh, uh, a whole lot of people who come in uh, bearing arms, subjecting people to all manners of indignities. Uh, I don't know which other word you would call it. The commander-in-chief needs an invitation to be able to go to a state? Nope. The commander-in-chief said, uh, not just the commander-in-chief, the army said that they were going to conduct an exercise. And they put a date for the con uh, to conduct that exercise. And that date was the 15th of um, September. On the, on the 11th, there was this whole uh, influx, which means it's about four days or five days before then. So what else are you going to say? You're going to actually assume that it wasn't part of the uh, exercise. I remember also at that time that I called the police commissioner when people were calling me and saying, this is what is going on here. And the police commissioner told me, oh, no, everything is calm. We, are, we don't have any problem. So I assumed. And I think also the reports had it that when the army was interrogated to say, why would you do this? They said, oh, we, we are testing repaired um, uh, military vehicles and all that. And of course, we asked. That was what the army said. That's, yes. That, I, you, I, just, I, just take all the timeline. I had the privilege <laughs> of interviewing the, uh, the chief of defense staff. And I said that that was a statement released by the police. Yeah. I mean, that was what the police said. The army said they were doing. He said he's not aware of that statement, that that's not what he was told on the ground. But nevertheless, I mean, I think the controversy will continue. We've moved past that now. The federal of government course. has prescribed IPOB. Yes. Um, it doesn't sound like something that the Southeast uh, Senate caucus is supporting. Is that right? Of course. We... You don't support it? We don't support it. We think that it was an overkill. We think that it was... Um, giving a dog a bad name to hang it. And because we felt that, uh, first of all, there are procedures that you use to go towards prescription. It wasn't followed. It was after the fact of prescription that the procedures were now followed. And um, we felt that you don't walk implications for profiling of all Southeasterners. Yes. Then some people will argue and say it was the same concern raised by certain people when Boko Haram was about to be prescribed and declared a terrorist organization. Yes. There were fears that all Northerners, not just Northeasterners now, will be branded as terrorists and profiled as such. But wasn't their fear at the end of the day unfounded? So let's ask ourselves another question, Maupe, and that is why was this, the people in this government also against? It was the same fear, not so. That's what you're saying. But I'm telling you that when an unarmed organization 
Cruz's avowed interest has been in non-violent agitation, okay? Just get this big hammer. And we have also looked at the reasons given. And look at the reasons given. One, that they tried to snatch guns. Tried to snatch guns from the military. Assuming that that is correct, can you juxtapose that with a Fulani husband that went to Agatu and killed more than 500 people or went to Nibo and killed 500 or, or more in Enugu state? This is not trying to snatch. It is now and then somebody from this same government sits on this chair and says, oh, that is criminal. That's not terrorism. And you want people from the Southeast to feel that they are a legitimate part of this country, treated fairly and equally. The real issue for us is that, and we made it very clear, is that what everybody wants is a Nigeria that is fair to all. Not a Nigeria in which you will classify some people in a different way and some other people in a much different way. Well, we do know that this, you know, classification has, his, has also raised quite a number of criticism and also, has also raised a number of questions and reactions. The people who do not see things from how you've explained it, they also think that in terms of the actions that IPOB was, you know, raising and, and the manner in which it went about its agitations, it had potential for the unity of this country. So, so there, I, I agree with you. So let us now ask a simple question. The potential is what you overkill by prescribing them as a terrorist organization. You don't agree then with that? Then at the same time, no, our problem is simple. At the same time, people have visibly done things that have actually impacted on the unity of this country by murdering their fellow citizens. And some people here in this country told us, I think a northern governor told us that he actually had to go to another country to negotiate with these people. Negotiate so that they don't come killing again. And then just a few people who haven't killed anybody, who haven't done anything, but because they have the potential of doing so, you now turn around and say they are terrorists with all the implications for being, uh, for being classified as so. Hell no. We, we, as the Southeast Caucus, we just felt this is not right. I find it interesting that in your statement you say that um, we condemn the use of hate speeches and remarks by anybody as the dignity of human persons must be respected at all times, even while dissenting on any issue. Precisely. We are, Who are you talking to? We're talking to everybody in Nigeria not IPOB plus IPOB we had a meeting the Southeast senators or Haneze and the Southeast governors a month before that and we all came and did a communique in which each and we said we condemned in all entirety this use of um, uncouth and foul language we said that the, the point is really yeah, what we see, which is also the same type of profiling that we have. We do things, and uh, there's a glossing over of whatever we do. Uh, we try to talk to uh, uh, the uh, people who are doing the agitation to tell them to tamp down, and then we're told, oh, you're consorting with uh, those who are doing agitations. And the point is this. If uh, the Southeast Caucus meets with the IPOB members in order to find peace. Would you now say that it is support? If the governors meet with IPOB like they did twice or so, will you now say that they are supporting IPOB? No. You, you can't have peace mm. without talking to the people who are also 
uh, causing the disruption. One last one before we move to, because all of this ties into, you know, the general agitations in the country for restructuring and, and fairness and equity. Now we're seeing that IFOB is suing uh, the chief of army staff and asking for the whereabouts of Namdi Kano. But we did hear, I mean, I think it was the presidential spokesperson who said that we should ask you. <laughs> the, you know, the, one of the one of the very, very unfortunate things here is that um, you come here, you try to personalize issues. When you don't have an answer, then you try to either abuse somebody or try to personalize it. So I wouldn't bother to, you know, talk about You don't think the you, for that. You, you stood shorty for him. Uh, yes, I stood shorty for him. Mm -hmm. But now put it in perspective. He is supposed to appear in court on the 17th of October. This is a few days then away. one month prior to his appearance in court on the 14th of September, clearly one month before, the army now invaded his uh, house, his father's house, his village, and since then nobody has heard from him. And then somebody comes here, who sent the army there one month before? He didn't wait until he had, he had his day in court. It was if they had waited and then his day in court came and he didn't show up, then you can say, oh, we're looking for him. Somebody went one month earlier and all that. What do you expect would be the uh, result of that invasion? So You don't think he'll be held responsible anymore for, for why, his Why should I be? Well, the point really is... Mark, well, let me also pose this question to you and other Nigerians. He's supposed to be in court in a month's time. We show up today trying to grab him or whatever, or we don't know whether he's dead, or because I hear that uh, the, they've gone to court seeking for his uh, whereabouts. Would you now hold me liable for what is supposed to happen in... Uh, 17 days or 18 days time. So I think that at the end of the day, I don't even want to, because this is a subjudice. Interestingly, the Senate, when they resumed, went into an executive session. We, we do know that the Senate president had separate meetings with leaders of the Southeast Caucus and also leaders of the Northern Caucus, I believe. And then when the Senate resumed, there was an executive session, unlike the House of Representatives, where it was more open, the Speaker uh, spoke. Why do you think the Senate had to go into an executive session immediately upon resumption? Usually we do executive sessions when there are matters of urgent importance. We build consensus. We talk with each other frankly. We now come out with a common position. That is why we are the Senate. That's why we are the upper chamber. Uh, we don't want to ventilate our uh, discussions, which has to do with critical national issues in public. Because when you have the camera on, in front of somebody, they might want to go overboard. And when they go overboard, it inflames tempers and all that. So we try to reach a, con we reach a consensus. And that consensus, of course, we are in the three... Um, the three uh, state, uh, uh, steps that the, uh, the Senate President uh, listed out. Mm -hmm. And uh, the most critical one, of course, for us was the fact that the Senate will take all measures, all avenues to be able to bring peace and lasting peace to all parts of the country where there is agitation. The unfortunate thing, of course, is that because we're focusing on the Southeast, there, you know, it now looks as if that is where the agitations are. No, there's agitations all over the place, which I'm sure you know. And that is the reason for the uh, recent clamor by all parts of Nigeria, by eminent Nigerians, that this union is very shaky and there is need for us to... Uh, 
uh, shore up the foundations of this union, let's put it that way. Mm. Senate seeks an avenue to make sure peace is restored in all parts of Nigeria. And then he also say all groups seeking to achieve agitation should do it through, so through constitutional means. Precisely. What does that mean then for all the groups that are, I mean, we've heard from the southern leaders of, of thought. We've heard of, from the Southern Leaders Forum. We've heard also from Ohanese. We're hearing also from the Southeast Senators Caucus. What exactly are your colleagues from the North saying? They're very supportive of the fact that the uh, agitations and all that must be looked into, and they must be looked into. And they're, they're also supportive of the fact that we call on everybody that you should use the... Uh, constitutional means of uh, doing your agitations and that, that nobody is against that that is why it came out as our communique constitutional mean, means means what because some people say that the uh, the changes that this country needs the 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 moves that it needs to make to be able to restructure cannot be done through the national assembly in fact they believe some b groups believe that we need an entirely new constitution and as such that is totally outside the limits of the National Assembly. Precisely. Um, let's put it this way, too. There is already a National Assembly in place. There's already a constitution in place. So that means that there are also avenues within the constitution for you to be able to have uh, uh, discussions with uh, various parts and various groups. That is why you have representatives, you understand. Uh, those who say, oh, it cannot be done under this, uh, I think that they probably are also those who have lost faith in Nigeria. I, do, I, don't, I don't think. We, we believe that there are still possibilities for us to be able to get to where we want to go under this constitution. That is why we also have things called constitutional amendment. If there is an aspect that is not there in the Constitution. For example, um, uh, the, 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 only, the only place where there's a referendum in the Constitution is when you have a creation of states. But suppose you want a referendum on other things that don't have to do with uh, that, then that means we have to amend the Constitution to insert that provision. And once we all agree, then that goes ahead. It's just a question of each and every one of us agreeing that this is the best way forward. And how do you do that? You're going to do it by discussions, by interactions, by deliberations, and uh, by consensus building. And some people will say that the House of Reps seem to be more progressive than the Senate in that regard, in terms of consensus building. If you look at, for instance, their vote on the devolution of power, they nearly got two-thirds majority. Looking at their numbers, 210 of them voted yes. And uh, just 71 voted no. If you look at the figures in the Senate, you have 46 voting yes and 48, even more, voting no. Yes. So what do you think is responsible for that disparity seen between uh, both chambers of National Assembly? Well, maybe the level of information that, you know, people have. The, the point, and I have to make this very clear to Nigerians, the, there's, there's this feeling that uh, restructuring uh, the evolution of powers and those ones means that you're essentially taking away from a particular part of the country their uh, inbuilt advantages that uh, came through the type of constitution that we have. And therefore, any attempt to juggle with it means, oh, you're going to deprive us of maybe revenue, maybe power, maybe, and all that. But the fact is that that's not it. I think what restructuring, to my own mind, means is changing the structure of this country such that the component units that make up the country do not continue along this part of what for a better word, somebody described as a feeding bottle uh, <laughs> democracy and, and, and actually bring a democracy that uh, people contribute, compete with each other, make their best way forward. And um, those from the northern part of the country, 
uh, who feel that, oh, um, we're going to be poorer and all that, actually are going to be the richest part of the country. And I'll tell you why. Simply put, in the next 10 to 20 years, there'll be no more use for oil. That is happening. Countries are now moving away from fossil fuels to this and so. Well, but people must eat. Agriculture is the, going to be the next uh, frontier, just like it used to be for Nigeria. And where do you really have this? It's the same, no, that's where you have the land, you have everything. So, let's just put it this way. Take a country like Netherlands. Netherlands is smaller than Niger State. Niger State is bigger than Netherlands, twice the size of Netherlands. But Netherlands exports agricultural products to the tune of about $180 billion. I don't think Nigeria has gotten up to $100 billion from oil. So you could see the potentials that are there when we harness ourselves properly and move away from this contraption that is today that makes everybody feel that you just have to work for a center that is overloaded, over bloated, and very difficult to manage. Would you agree that at the heart of all of this is the talk of oil? There's not, at the heart of the feeding bottle <laughs> economy is proceeds from oil. That one is, and that's what we want to change. We want to say, let's move to a knowledge-based economy. Let's move to, and just put it this way. I will just give you one more example, and that is... Well, distinguished, I'm afraid. Let's quickly take a moment <laughs> now. I'll let you finish and wrap up your thoughts when we return from this break. Please stay with us. Naya Abaribe is still with us in the studio. Distinguished, just before we went on that break, you were saying that you were explaining whether you thought that this problem was oil about oil and its issues. Yes, I, I, I was trying to just give you um, an example, and I said... Um, Ten years ago, the top ten companies in the world with the largest revenues were oil companies, Shell, you know, Dexaco, and so forth. But today, the top ten companies are technology companies, Google, uh, and, and so forth. So you now see that we're actually moving away from you know, fossil-based things. That's so, the world to, to is moving knowledge, away. The world is moving away. But not Nigeria. We're, we're sitting here, and this whole conversation and this whole uh, thought we're doing is, how do we share what is coming from? When that dries up, and we're just asking Nigerians that it is time for us to think beyond today. Think beyond today. Do you think that if we did not have to share, I mean, because for some people, they think it's about the sharing if we did not have to share, there'd be no talk of equity. Do you think that this conversation about restructuring wouldn't be so loud? If you have uh, about what some people say, they say go back to the 1963 constitution. Yes, why? You've heard that. The, the reason why they say go back to the 1963 at that time there was no, 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 no conversation about sharing. It was about what do you contribute to the center. And there was so much competition between the uh, different component parts of Nigeria at that time. And that is what um, you can see part of the conversation is going because they understand that part of this whole thing just has nothing else to do but for people who do not think that they need to move away from their comfort zone.